Here we are, hitting up events, drinking our way through Chicago beer, and trying not to miss a thing. Yeah, because, you know, got a cork popped out, boop, it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, all you have to do is add some fruit, stir it up, and ride that milkshake wave. Whenever I see him, I gotta take a photo with the most decorated brewer in Chicago, Jonathan Cutler. It'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Sometimes you want a small beer, but really, you want a big beer. You gotta take in all those big aromatic hops. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Waiting in line for a bottle release? You should have never been a fad. The black IPA is delicious. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Schmaluski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. And we're getting, we're going sweet this time. We got some cider. Got a mixed four pack from uh, just up the road here, man. Eris, the yeah. uh, the goddess of chaos. So I went in there and picked these up, but I would have 100% bought a four pack of beer mm -hmm. from Eris if they would have had beer in package. This is very confusing. So they're not making beer still. I did not see a menu. I didn't go beyond the little kiosk mm. entryway. So I don't know if there was beer, but to buy things to go, you only have cider options. So it's, it's I don't know. I don't know if I should feel sad about it, but I do. Like, because I like their beer. And then I don't always like cider. Right. You know? But I was like, well, I, I came here. I'm not just going to leave. I'm already here. I'm here, I'm so let's get this. this. And then I was like, oh, a mixed four-pack. That's fun because I really didn't want four of any of these. Fair. So pedestrian is the one we're drinking. Right. But then there's also blush, and then there's also a, a purple one, Van Van Mojo. Right. Which is a mosaic hot blueberry cider. That sounds very good, actually. So pedestrian is their uh, dry, like a Granny Smith. But I'm getting like... Almost like a mosaic hop, like weed kind of taste to it. Is well, that just me? Or I mean, you're, just... you're a stoner, you know, for what that <laughs> sounds like. I just get like weed taste to it. I mean, this one kind of tastes like cider. It's a little, it, it leans a little bit on the syrupy side for it to be a dry cider for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'd expect that from one of the other ones. They have one called uh, Straw Barbarella, Strawberry Barbarella, I think. Oh, okay. It's a very cool name. And then also saw Strawberry and Cider. Um, but also, I just really love the name. Okay, which one were you going to open next? Uh, probably the Van Van Mojo, right? Blueberry with the right. uh, mosaic. That one seemed like that sounds. Cool. That sounds like fun. I yeah. feel like that's the one I typically go to sometimes when I'm in there. Yeah, the power of cider, you know. Because there's hops in it, I'm like, all right, well, I can't have a beer because you don't make beer. It smells just like hop water, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. And the color looks great on mm -hmm. it. Yeah, that was fun. And I like that it's kind of like, um, you know, it's kind of blending their two passions a little more so than just um, anything virtue would do. Right. You know, well, virtue, but in comparison, I think the virtue beers, of ciders, I think one of them was modeled after, uh, I think they took some Sophie Ward up there once they were saying, or Matilda Ward to make one of their, one of their ciders. But then a lot of their ciders lean more into the farmhouse funky saison side of things anyway right where these kind of lean more into the uh your van whatever that category is when vandermill's in and angry orchard's in yeah these kind of are in that category but a little less sweet vandermill and for sure angry angry orchard's definitely just for sure sugar but definitely not on the wild or funky or even uh tart yeah or sour side the the heiress guys or ladies i feel like don't really do that mm -hmm. a lot but we've talked about cider and seltzer and the alternatives to beer and cider is not my pick no? if, if i would have walked in there and they would have had some sort of heiress seltzer i might have went with that because i might have been a little more intrigued than the uh, than the cider I don't you're ready for the uh you're ready for the heiress uh, apple brandy yeah That's what you're, i mean I'd, I'd be here for the heiress apple brandy give me that you know, they're, they got a, what is it, their five-year anniversary one, I want to say was an upside-down pineapple cake mm. with glitter, I think. Okay. Um, What's my alternative to beer now? I don't know. You think, so you're thinking, if you were ranking them, 
and you said alternatives to beer, you know, you go, you can go straight up hard seltzer, you can go cider, and then there's um, uh, this hop water, or hop water, water or, or uh, regular seltzer, or just RTDs. Right. Shit, a lot of breweries are making RTDs because they are also distillers. Right. And then you have the weed water. And then you have that weed water from uh, Hopwell. Hop, yeah, and yeah, so. a bunch of other people are doing that too. So. Oh, yeah. So so the, you've got like, we just named like four alternatives. Like, where are you ranking cider of the ones that we just named? The the weed water, the seltzer, the RTDs, <laughs> which are straight up cocktails in a can. Yeah. Or hard seltzer or cider. I think my preferences are probably going to be beer, art, the, the mixed cocktail, cans, cocktail. I guess we could throw meat in there, too. Oh, meat's at the bottom. Okay. So I, 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 <laughs> then I might go s- seltzer, hop, the weed waters, and then cider, and then yeah. mead. I'm a fan of hop waters. I'm a fan of these fucking RTD cocktails. Yeah, Bring that's it why on. they like... Bring poof. it on. Okay. Yeah. Seltzer's a cider's good, um, just because I know I can up at a level with a little splash of sure. any fucking spirit. So it still has some value. I don't make my way around the um, seltzers a whole lot though. Yeah. So I, I was gonna bring up some ice because I feel like c- cider and ice. I don't know. It would be good. Of... That would be good. Yeah, it's like a yeah. you water down. It's like uh, people who drink wine with ice. It's like it keeps it cool. And you get to drink more of it without getting as fucked up kind it's, of thing. It's, it's refreshing. Right. Sure. I, f- I feel like no different from, like, iced coffee. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's just another way to drink it, you know. But it's fun to always see what Eris is up to because yeah. I do have good food. I like Eris. Um, a lot of fun. I'm not vegan. They have a lot of fun vegan options, though, if mm-hmm. you want to go light. so Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, we skipped last week, but uh, we did. I did a bunch of stuff. Okay. I biked up to Makushla. Makushla, hello, Glencoe, Illinois. Glenview, Glencoe? Glenview, Glenview. I, I think Glenview. Okay. Yeah. Not a bad bike ride. Nice okay. through the forest parks, whatever you want to call them, uh, trails. And this place was pretty empty when we got there. It was a Sunday <laughs> afternoon. The taco place is now gone. It's the tap room for Hackney's, right? It's Hackney's. Is, they share parking lot with Hackney's. Hackney's is still there, but then there was a taco place that was in the back kitchen of Hackney's oh. for a while. That's gone. Hmm. So you can order food from Hackney's and go pick it up, but there's no food in Makushla. So that was kind of a bummer besides some bags of chips. After, you know, you bike there and you're like, oh, I could go for some, like, chips and salsa and a few beers. So just point there. But the beers... Uh, pretty pretty tasty. Okay. Uh, Makushla, you're never having unless you go there because I've never seen anything in cans. I yeah. think I've seen some people with crawlers of them, and no one knows this place exists, and it could close, and people would say, who? Um, but it's got a nice space. It's outside. It's all open, and they make solid beer. They are kind of... If they were in the city, they'd be the urban brew labs that couldn't hack it. But they're in the suburbs, and it works out really well because of where they are. Okay. Well, um, I'm familiar with Hackney's because there's one in Printer's Row. And, mm-hmm. um, but I know Makushla because um, from Rogers Park, if you go straight west, now you're in the Niles um, you know, Skokie land of, you know, adventures. You're looking for adventures. Yeah. And Makushla kind of falls into that little um, section, that little northwest suburb section of stuff to get into if you feel like, you know, Sundays you want to leave the city. Mm-hmm. So I'm familiar with Makushla. But, yeah. yeah. But outside of, like, living northwest, I wouldn't I wouldn't know about Makushla. No. And that 1090 is kind of right down the street. Yeah. No one's like we biked by there because we were biking then to Double Clutch. We thought about stopping there, but we were like, "Well, we let's just get to Double Clutch because we're hungry." Nobody was in that parking lot for Double Clutch. I or not for Double Clutch for Ten Ninety. I forgot they were even there. Yeah, I think Ten Ninety refers to the gravity of their beers. Okay. I think a lot of beers have something to do with like uh like ten percent beers or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It's tough out here, especially when you got a crew like Double Clutch who is still new to the scene and they figured things out. And um, you know the critics love them. They have a, they are part of a restaurant group, 
So they understand how to how food plays into these type of spaces. They understand how to build out spaces because they're part of a restaurant group. Right, and, and they have VC fun people behind it too. Yeah. So and they um and the beer's been good. Um and so yeah, we biked over from Makushla to Double Clutch. Not very many people there. I think more people were working there than actually there. Yeah. Uh, Sunday afternoon for dinner time. Not not happening which was surprising on like a very nice day um it's a family friendly space there was a family with some kids looking at the cars in there but do you have a preference when you go to places like you want it to be a bunch of people or do you not mind if no one's ever you? i don't mind but for them i was kind of surprised okay. for evanston uh being very there's lots of families there's people that go out that there wasn't a lot of people in there for a sunday afternoon where Whenever I've gone to Sketchbook Skokie, it's packed. I kind of like going to places and there's nobody in this joint. Sure. Like I'm like, okay, this is, this is my speed. I, I will sit on the couch. Thank you very yeah. much. But when there's a no one's in there, and then you're like, oh, can I get a water? They're like, yeah, it's over there on the bar. You can fill your own cups. Mm -hmm. It's like, really? What's what's happening here? I understand getting my own water at like a tap room, but at a restaurant, I feel like you should bring me this water. I mean, that is one way to look at it, for sure. Um, side note on uh, Double Clutch, man. Um, they have, when you, if you go to Montrose Harbor, for some reason, there's like six Double Clutch drafts on Oh, Oh, on yeah, I think Montrose you mentioned Harbor. this one. Yeah. The beer is very good. It is better than it should be for uh, just, I don't know, it's shockingly good every time I have their beer. Yeah. Um, overall, like, the food's kind of expensive for... Um, basically like a chicken sandwich and a beer you're walking out of there with 45 dollars a person hmm. so yeah i don't know if it's that good the beer i would just kind of probably stick to drinking there yeah um hellish lager they had a smoke beer which is proper smoke beer like mostly like 80 percent smoke i got the hellish with it no no i got the Kolsch. they even have wine on draft oh they do yeah um, and then they're dabbling a little bit too. I had a, a little juicy coupe. They had a hazy on one time when I went. Okay. Um, yeah, they're doing good stuff. And then of course it's a it's a car museum. Yeah. So it's just a very nice space. Right. I think they've got like a session pail or summer session. And yeah. Yeah. Great. Great beers. So uh, definitely better than Makushla, but you know they both exist in their own space and they should both stay open and stay going so <laughs> let's see either um, of them go away does Makusha have like a flagship or anything or anything that they're just like really jazzed about or or do they have like do they lean towards a certain types of beers no they kind of do it all okay like uh they'll have oktoberfest they'll have not right now but we're probably any day now because those oktoberfests are already rolling out uh they had a uh, i think a fruit uh lager i want to say it was like pineapple or berry lager um, that was great after the bike ride uh, they do hazies they have some stouts yeah, yeah. they often have a red ale so yeah kind of run the gamut over there um yeah, i like the logo it's like a little heart made this like heart with hands it's like the, your hands that make the ship right heart. yeah and it's like uh yeah and that because it means something i, I forget i forget too, it's yeah. something to do with like i'm good that i remember the name of it yeah. So that's that's uh, progress for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, then what was I made a couple other stops. Uh, I went over to Ravenswood on tap. Right on. And it's cash only. That's funny. And there was a metal. St straight cash, homie. And they have some ATM set up. I don't have a debit card on me. My debit card's in my phone. They don't want the feds in their business, Brad. You know, it's as simple as that. So, but you can go to the ATM and take out cash, but the ATMs are like old ATMs, so they don't even have like uh, card like taps on them. Oh, it's like old school. You have to swipe your fucking. Uh, you got to put your card in. Yeah. Man, it's rough out here. So I was like, well, yeah. there's this metal band plan. I have no cash. I'm leaving. Who the fuck's carrying cash? The in the year 2024, our Lord. The 50 plus crowd that was at Ravenswood on tap. <laughs> <laughs> why, are you making period, why are you making people carry cash for fucking beer? Right. Cause, uh, well, cause they, because they don't, want, they don't want to report how much money was made at this joint. Right. But last, what was it, two weekends ago, 
uh, Square Roots Fest only card. They do not take cash. You know, like a modern festival would. Right. How do you go from COVID times of no one wanting to touch cash to being like, all right, cash is back. I don't get it, man. (laughs) I don't fucking get it. But that just meant went over to Beguile and had a beer over there instead. Yeah, it is Malt Row. um, Five or six breweries all within like two miles. Right. Yeah. Uh, but you went over to Raven's Way on Tap too, right? Yeah, I fell through there right before it closed on like Sunday. Okay. Yeah, so I was there for the uh, there's all girls BC Boys uh, band. Oh, that's awesome. And um, yeah, they well it's small row, so as far as festivals go, there's a lot of beer options. Yeah. Because you know because I'm it's small row. Turn this AC back on. Okay. So it's getting kind of warm. Yeah. There. So, you know, the, just having the malt row options. Koval was out there killing it with like a fucking um, vodka lemonade. That was okay. nice. They might have been bourbon lemonade. And they had like a uh, cranberry, they have a cranberry liqueur, so they were doing a, sp- a cranberry gin liqueur, and they were doing a spritz with that. Oh, nice. So, you know, a little fuzzy water with some ice cubes. So I think they were killing it the most. There was, was a, a lot water. of options. Like, yeah. I was kind of surprised. I was I was a little disappointed I didn't have cash, because I was yeah. like, oh, there's a few things I would want to try. Yeah. So. I think I just started twerking and getting to <laughs> and that's how I paid for my beer. <laughs> okay. Uh, but... Um, yeah, I was thinking of other street fests that I've been to, that they they probably they probably did the best job of having just really fun lineup of stuff to drink. Right, because Square Roots Fest, they had a good amount to drink. Yeah. It wasn't super interesting. It was a lot of like just classic things. We've had this talk. Even uh, I remember Gary Valentine chimed in like ten years ago about uh, West Loop Fest because it was sponsored by. Uh, Amstel Light, and I'm like, damn, we're in West Loop though, Ground Zero for a lot of cool breweries, and um, you know, he was like, yeah, West, but you know, Amstel Light cut the biggest check, you know, even at um fucking uh, West Fest, over on uh, Chicago Ave, yeah, all you could get, we talked about it a little bit, all you could get was like Corona Miller Light out of plastic cups, you know, and that's all you can get at the party. I'm like, not, you can't even get three one two. I'm like, damn, I can't get no three hundred twelve. I said, that's rough. <laughs> so a party, so these festivals are rough. That's why I was like. Well, shit, at least they got good drinks. The, the cash thing's kind of weird, though, mm-hmm. but I agree with that. Uh, so we just opened this Blush from Eris. Maybe my favorite of the three. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be that we're on the third one. <laughs> it's uh, I'm digging this one the most. It's solid. Um, it's red, but why is it red? Is it cherry? Is it strawberry? What's this? It's, uh, like it's a, a rosé. Oh, so it's blended with sweet and tart cherries. Mm-hmm. That's fun. Yeah. What, I'm just I'm just trying to figure out what the ABV is on these. Oh, they're five nine. Right. I think yeah. uh, the, the Van 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 Mojo was six. So yeah. For some reason that one's a little more um, probably the sweetness from the blueberries. Yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of street fest, man, shout out to uh, the Taste of Lincoln Avenue. That was this weekend. Okay. Um, Three Floyds was a sponsor. What? The, the really? only beer you could get is Three Floyds beer. So it's like, what you want, zombie dust, or you want Gumballhead, or you, you know, you want um, Robert DeBruce? It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't make no sense at all, even the fucking branding on the stage. You know, it's like stages on both ends, on yeah. Lincoln Ave. So Lincoln Ave between, I would say, I don't know, maybe like uh, Wrightwood and uh, Fullerton, or something like that. So like 2400 to 2600 on Lincoln. Okay. So near DePaul, and right before you hit Delilah's. So over where... What's that place, the Cajun Brewery, that um, kind of like over that way? Cajun Brewery. No, this is where the Biograph Theater, that kind of looks like, uh, the bio, you know, the Biograph Theater, because yeah. it looks cool like that one theater over on Ashland. Okay. Like the old school, old timey movie theater. Oh, so okay. this is basically like walking distance from the old Atlas and Delilah's and like Pyramid. Okay, and yeah, okay. The Cajun Brewery. What is the Cajun Brewery? The one that was by Small Bar, Fullerton. Against the grain, well, not against the grain. It was a Cajun brew over there. The, Man, they have, for they served Cajun food and brewed their own beer. Really? Come yeah. On. Yeah. You for real? For real. Fuck. That's Southport. Because yeah. the small bar was on Southport. Yeah. So no, not that far. Not um, that far. Okay. It was more. It was a little more. Uh, a little more west than that. Okay. Fuck. I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. It wasn't a. Against the green, but it was like a gangster. Oh, no, not all right. You're not talking about uh, you're not talking about local option. Local option, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, 
So no, 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 that's too far east. Okay. No. But local option, they have Cajun. Oh, but, oh, they do have. You're right. It, local option. Yeah. It's okay. so it would be north of that. Yeah. It would, okay. be, it would just be north. Just like north you of said, that. where Atlas was. And yeah. Um. Oh, what was I was gonna say, talk about RTDs. The uh, I think you had it on the show once. Uh, the Floyd's RTDs have these characters that look like uh, something out of Sour Patch Kids or Garbage Pail Kids. Oh no! Oh yeah, we. I we talked we had, about them, no. but we had the. I think you had them at a party, or we had them on a show. I remember, I remember talking about. We this had like you. the bottles. We had the Barnaby's, the glass one. I was like, oh, dude, this is real good. These fucking RTDs, and it's not the five percent. It's like nine percent. Yeah, the. Fl- it's a party. These yeah. fucking things. One was coconut. One was pineapple lime. Good. I'm like hell yeah, bring it on. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, so okay. shout out to Floyd's, and shout out to Taste Lincoln Wood. I think Taste Lincoln Wood. And this Ravenswood thing, kind of bringing it with the fucking uh, beverage option. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, also over there in that uh, corridor, Ravenswood corridor, Malt Row. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hit up is was. Oh, right on. So the newest brewery. Right. The newest tap room. So I was very confused because everyone right. said they did nothing. Since uh, Urban Renewal Brew Labs closed, right. I had never been in this tap room space. Oh, you didn't go when it was Urban Renewal? No, okay. I went when they built out that to go area that was maybe half the size of this room we're in right now. That You're was talking like about for Koval? Not where the old, it was. In the metro space, in the Urban Brew Lab space. Before, we did an interview there. Right, before they. We were in there, but this like tap room to go area wasn't even built out yet. Mm-hmm. So then, when that got built out, that's what I thought this tap room was. Mm-hmm. I never even knew the co- the old call vault space right. became the tap room. So when right. everyone's like, "Yeah, they didn't really do much," I was like, eh, "It wasn't much in there. It was just like standing room only." But no, yeah. this is like. There's seats and windows. It's a straight up tap room. There's a bar. <laughs> the other one was like, we open the garage door, come in and take some samples and buy beer to go. That was the old Metro space, right? Right. Which Metro never had this they like. They never had a tap room. That's how I ended up in Avondale. Right. Yeah. Uh, which, if Metro would have just maybe done this smaller is was Urban Brew Labs tap room, it might have been way better for them. Well, they don't get in. They, you don't get into a rent dispute if you do that. But Metro was like, hey, we're, we're nine years old. Go big, go home. Right. Shit. And it makes sense. They went home. It made sense for them. <laughs> it made sense for them to swing for that, for right. that type of thing. Um, oh, but I don't think that was available to them, though, because at the time, you know, that was all Koval. They the were space, still using it? Yeah, the space, that, um, the space that Urban Brew Labs converted into a tap room was Koval's barrel warehouse. Okay. I remember doing an interview for, uh, like, a FOBAB doc, and we met Randy Mosier there, and it was just all warehouse. But since then, Koval moved their warehouse. So Koval has a tap room down the street right. on Ravenswood, maybe a mile or two south. But Koval's warehouse for their whiskey is up in like Michigan now. Oh, it was a way bigger space. So this all their barrels were there. In that tiny, that's yeah. pretty small for all right. their barrels. And, and they're in all fifty states. So they're like, we got to fix this. Yeah. So they 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 got a space in Michigan, and then that space came open. But I don't know if that was available for Metro when they were looking. Okay. But yeah, but had it been, that that'd have been a good play for them. Right. Yeah. So. Never have going there thinking I've gone there. Mm. Now going, I'm like, oh, this is kind of a nice tap room. I kind of solid. It's low key. It's nice. I I don't dislike is was beer, but mm-hmm. I don't want is was beer. Okay. I got whatever the low ABV table beer was. Yeah. And then I got a Goldfinger Lager. Oh, they had Goldfinger on. Yeah. Good for them. I had a. Cause I, I went to this after the, uh, the Ravenswood thing, and I had the uh, I had a coupon for stay on. Okay. It was like very cl- it was almost clear. Oh, that's cool. It was like really like small. It had something like a harvest stay on. I mean, it was what I thought it would be. It is was you it, thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> it is was what I thought it would be, man. It kind of reminded me of um, Afterthought if you ever if you've been out there yet. No, I haven't been that. Uh, well, the thing about Afterthought that I give them credit for because when you mentioned the Goldfinger thing, now I'm intrigued. Because um, Goldfinger's in fucking Downers Grove. Right. So if I get Goldfinger. <laughs> you get your Goldfinger or, or Ravenswood, I'm coming yeah. to Ravenswood to get it. 
Oh, but when you go to um, Afterthought, Afterthought's got eight of their own beers, and they have a bunch of you know uh, large format bottles and shit. But then they have it. They it, after that, it's like Hopley. They have like ten pages oh, of Belgian right. beers from around the world with proper glassware, and you can just nerd out on all Belgians from everywhere. And I'm like, I got a lot of respect for that because they don't give a fuck if you order their beer or a Belgian from anywhere. Just order something from the shit that they like to drink. Yeah, kind of yeah. like Lunar. It, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's so, yeah, when you put it like that. <laughs> yo, did you know we have beer? We're yo, Lunar. You know, it's funny. I told this story a couple days ago. We, me and Brad were hanging out for like New Year's Eve right before. Yeah. <laughs> and Brad was supposed to take us to fucking Moore up in Huntley. We ended up at the original Moore <laughs> instead. I'm not, I still don't know how we had did this. Yo, but so you were like, well, let's go to Lunar. I've never been. And we go to Lunar and it is fucking, I swear you like walk right into 1999. It's a VFW that has a brewery and there's a dude in the Lagunitas hoodie and there's a strobe light and there's fucking Christmas decorations. And I'm just like, I don't know what, I don't know what is happening. Yeah. It was, um, it was, it was something. But it was, I feel like that's going to be, when I go there again, it's going to be, I will try one of your beers. Give me the other thing that I know I like. Yeah, for after sure. That. Like, I don't, I'm not going to fuck around with be like, oh, let me try the other um, sparkling saison thing. <laughs> saison is a good word. It's a saison thing, you know. <laughs> yeah. So good for them. I think... Um, I'm glad, I'm glad the space exists as a brewery. Yeah. Because it could be something else. So It would be a good yeah. taco place. Like it has like a design of like a taco. What the fuck no. are you and these fucking tacos? Um, but it's good to know they have a guest list because I will go back and get okay. some Goldfinger. Yeah. And maybe try some more of their stuff. Who knows? Cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Anything else that I hit up? You hit up? Ravenswood is was... Um, uh, I think uh, hit up a Cubs game. The beer selection there is weird. Um, it's like you can go to different places and find different stuff. Yeah, I think and old style people who like old style you can get that everywhere. But if you want to go hyper local, you got to go to that one bar all the way at the end by the. Uh, if they're still calling it the um, Captain Morgan's Lounge, there's a bar all the way at the end, like the most eastern bar you can get. Oh, and that's like all craft stuff. I found one third level overlooking that like uh greenery area for sure they got all craft cans um so you can get like daisy cutter and shit like that yeah. up there. you know it's weird if you you sneak into the bleachers now you can get lagunese ipa okay which why wouldn't lagunese ipa just be everywhere is, is beyond me but i'm like oh lagunese ipa is out here right. i guess i'm getting that but yeah it is strange it's strange that's uh, i um yeah, this is weird drinking there. You're like, get an old style, and they're like, I guess I need something else. Yeah. Um, on, a, on a good day, though. It's fun. It's fun to cruise. Cubby Rita. Day. I got to be honest with you, Brad. If we're ranking things at Wrigley, <laughs> I don't know what goes higher than Cubby Rita. Cubby Rita is high as you go. <laughs> it comes, you can get it in a little... A little can, baseball. You can get it in a little baseball jar. You can get it in a full pail. <laughs> Oh, you can? You can get a pale, cubby blue pale. This is the only Cubs thing I have in my house. Okay. It's this fucking pale from Wrigley with uh, Cubby Rita, man. I went with my mom and sister and Maeve, and we got Cubby Rita's. And so Dude. then they had the glasses, so. You can have a proper fucking day off Cubby Rita's. I'm here to, I'm here to Watching tell Watching them make it, there's not a lot of, like, perfect measuring. They're just kind of <laughs> like, man, all right, that bottle's done. <laughs> You know, Wrigley's all right, man. Wrigley's all right with me. Shit, I like Wrigley, man. It's fun up there. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think that was uh, that was all my adventure. That was a pretty jam packed couple weeks there. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, and then on the news side, we got Bourbon County news because yeah. summer's over. Um, it's getting there, man. Um, yeah, BCS is, is has been announced earlier than ever before. And, um, you know, I think last year they had six, but this year the Bourbon County Style 2024 lineup is five. Okay. Uh, and then in the past it's been like 12. It's been a lot. Ten, a I lot think. More, a lot more than five, man. I don't know where we should start here. We start with the OG. Regular, okay. Yeah, uh, regular. And then there's something called a macaroon stout, which is cocoa, 
nibs, candy, ginger, and coconut. I actually think this might be a sleeper hit. Okay. Because they really know their way around those adjuncts. Not the candy ginger, but the cocoa nibs and the coconut. Yeah. They, I feel like that could be really good. Um, prop this year is a barley wine. It's a Mexican candy barley wine. So it's a barley wine with tamarind, lime, guajillo chilies, and uh, piloncillo, which is that Mexican dessert sugar. Okay. This sounds crazy as fuck. I think this is the most polarizing of the wines. Um, then they have a brand new beer this fall. That's uh, it's called the Bargetown Original Series, so it's um, it's basically double barrel. Okay. Yeah. So they uh, they take BCS, and then they uh, they put it in Kentucky straight rye whiskey barrels, and then they finish it in a toasted cherry and wood oak barrel. Mm. Sorry, I said cherry wood and oak. Okay. So cherry wood's a type of wood, I guess. So it's in a whiskey. It's in whiskey. So this is the first time they're doing whiskey. Well, the, it's, a, it's rye whiskey. So let me read. Let me read that again, right? Because it's usually it's been a lot of bourbon. Yeah, it's a stout aged in it's BCS aged in rye whiskey barrels, which okay. is not what they usually do. It's aged in rye whiskey barrels, and then the second barrel is a oak and cherry wood barrel. So it's a, a toasted barrel that they finish. Fish, it in. So it's not. It's a new barrel. It's it's a new barrel. Okay. Yeah, it's a new barrel that's toasted. Okay. Right. So it's uh, I mean that might be interesting. I think it mimics the Bartstown. Bar, the Bartstown has the Bartstown whiskey does the same thing. Uh, it's a rye whiskey, and then they finish it on this barrel. I want to know more about this because it sounds like one of these barrels where each plank is different. So like one plank is cherry wood, one plank is oak, uh, and then you know they toast that. Okay. Right? But yeah, that could have some fun flavors. Yeah. Cask finish, Bourbon County cask finish. They call that one. Uh, I wonder if they tried it in the barrels that were used by the Bart. Barts? Bartstown. Bartstown. Bartstown is like super new, maybe five years old, but it's a guy who came from Maker's Mark. Oh, okay. So maybe there was no barrels or they couldn't use like previously used barrels. So they're um, like, let's mimic this and see what happens. Um, <laughs> Maybe. They're off and running though. Bartstown's off and running. It's pro- yeah. From what I hear, it's like one of the better stops when you go down there. Hmm. Um, so that's probably the most interesting one. That's probably going to be the hardest one to get, the most expensive one. Okay. And then uh, the return of Vanilla Rye, man. So Vanilla Rye is back. Okay, um, nice. Vanilla rye, of course, is a. Um, I want to say vanilla rye is also finished in rye barrels. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, vanilla rye stout. This seems like a very tight lineup. Where I think going into last year, we've made we made comments about how there's still stuff on the shelf. Yeah. And you guys are like, they're gonna pull back, mm-hmm. and here they are pulling back. Um, definitely less variance than yeah before for sure they might volume might be the same but less options which yeah. is probably a better call because if you go up to the the rack or wherever you're buying you're like i don't know which one to get i'm just gonna get the other thing i always know i can't decide between cherry vanilla whatever all the different flavors coconut let's, let's get yeah. the brother one yeah <laughs> let's get the mexican um, you know, uh, Michelada barley wine. Right. I mean, like, I'll just get ice cream and have my dessert. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what? I'm just going to go. I'm just going to have that bottle of whiskey. Yeah. And I'm just going to go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see. Um, do they, do any of them, uh, I know Rev has announced a lot of their lineup. I don't remember the whole thing it, it, they kicked it off pretty pretty strong with coconut and uh vsoj right um but what else is in the lineup R- not yeah me on the rev side but on the goose side not having i don't know if there's anything in there that like excites me mm-hmm. like the double barrel that they did was it last year or two years ago that was great mm-hmm. that excites me i would almost be excited to see a double barrel in different i guess that's what that Bartstown kind of is, right? Yeah, it's um because they came out with a cherry wood one a few years ago. Matter of fact, when we, mm-hmm. it was the the year we did it from home, and the cherry wood one, it didn't it didn't offer, mm-hmm. it wasn't a whole lot different from OG, like it's like yo this is uh, BCS that we finished in cherry wood barrels, and I'm like well, cherry wood isn't really expressive enough for me to get excited about it. So cherry wood BCS, I was just like. 
Well, they don't really taste like cherry, but it's not supposed to. It's just cherry wood, so it's supposed to be like this softer, more nuanced version of. That's the one where they went barrel forward for all of them. Oh yeah. That was the Blantons, and then the old Forster 150 in the big white bottle, and everything was. It was just a focus on barrels, and I was like, you know, these are. I don't really understand. The, the, that, but you know, that was birthday year, birthday right. and um, anniversary. And then you're like, the most consumer, maybe the consumer that's after the Bourbon County, they're not. I'm not picking off all these like, oh yeah, that's blind lineup. Oh, that's Blanton's. That's uh, birthday. That's uh, people don't give a fuck. And then they're making you give a fuck because it got all this fancy branding behind it. You know, right. the Blanton's one has a little horsey and. The one, the old Forster one looks just like the anniversary old Forster mm-hmm. whiskey, and you know that. But I, what you're saying, like, how relevant is that to people who just like Bourbon County? Because mm-hmm. like the the best example of this would just be like straight up Scotch versus a Scotch beer, you know, like right. Scotch ale tastes nothing like Scotch, and I don't think people who drink Scotch give a fuck about Scotch ale. Okay, I really think they should do or figure out. I don't know if they did. Work with someone to do a whiskey or bourbon in Bourbon County barrels. I guess it would be a whiskey then. Oh, you mean like finish their whiskey in BCS barrels? Yeah. And that they there is a um I don't I don't remember seeing any advertisements for it, but there's a barge town that finishes in BCS barrels. It's like a two hundred dollar play. Okay. And it set it sits in Benny's. You could probably get it today, but I don't know anything about it as far as how it tastes because that's a high price point. But I think that's how their relationship started with Barge Town. Okay. But why the, couldn't Goose just roll this out? Like, they Goose, got the barrels, they got the space. Goose so. should have made a more big, uh, they should have made a bigger deal of that whiskey to get people excited about this. Right, and I yeah. think you, you'd you sell both Bourbon County and the whiskey easy. Yeah. Back to back, people would be like, well, let me let me drink this, have a little bit of this. Oh, I can kind of see these going together yeah. and what's happening. And yeah, because side note, um, Microphone, who's having their Smells Like a Bean Spirit Fest this weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh, but they're, they're debuting a whiskey that kind of mimics uh, Smells Like a Bean Spirit. Oh, but anyway, um, this whiskey's $130. It's got some local coffee, and it's like, you know, we distilled our beer into this whiskey mm-hmm. or something like along those lines. But I mean, but they're getting people excited. They're, they're an, their big annual fest has smells like a bean spirit variants. Plus this whiskey, <laughs> they're like, come get excited about this whiskey. That's the whole point of that. Right. And Rev should do like, not just saying goose should do this. Rev should do the same thing. They should have a deep woods whiskey. Like, that, the, like the piggyback a few years ago from yeah, uh, wh- whistle pig. Yeah. That's maybe just, you can get it at the Rev Tap Room, or maybe like, because it'd be a small quantity, or maybe it's like the two hundred dollars, and be like, let's roll this out and get our branding in front of some other people. If it's truly a crossover thing that they're going for, and they've said the Goose has come out and said that, yeah, like, hey, we're trying to appeal to people who like whiskey. If that's truly what you're trying to do, then you wouldn't. Um, I happen to see the Barstown uh, BCS finished whiskey. I didn't see anything. I didn't see a rollout like I saw for these BCS lineup. Okay. So yeah, what you're saying is true. If you're they're not, really, you're not getting whiskey drinkers drinking your Bourbon County. You're getting beer drinkers going to whiskey. It and goes. It goes. It goes in that direction. And then they're like, "Well, I can have this bottle for thirty dollars or two bottles of your thing. I'll go with this bottle and have this for." What, however long it takes yeah. to drink the bottle, which is much longer than the two bottles you could buy. Yeah. Or this, the four pack. This is going <laughs> to fly over. This is a, this is along the lines of the thing we said about, um, hey, prop, as nice of a gesture it is to have prop every year in the fancy light blue packaging. Instead of coming out with prop, why don't you just come out with all, have a variety pack and little buddy cans of all six of them and make that in Chicago and make that, stamp that as prop. Like, hey, you know, we love Chicago so much that we didn't just give you one. You can have all six of them in a mix pack just like Eris or anybody else does. Right. That would be that would be prop that people like us would get excited about. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So I don't know if they're listening, but this is along those lines. If you're really trying to blur the lines, have give us more whiskey, like you said. Now yeah. I'm just rambling. But. but along that, I did see that, like, uh, speed of whiskey sales, like Diageo, who owns Guinness, yeah. they said their spirits line was down and Guinness was up. Guinness was making money. <laughs> so beer's back? 
The brand is strong. You know, we underestimate how many people drink Guinness. Right. Because Guinness is um, what's the fifth overall largest brewery on the planet. Just overall. Okay. And primar- they have other brands, but primarily they're just selling the stout. Right? They got other stuff, right? They got Blonde and, you know, some other shit. But they really just have variants of the stout primarily. Sure, yeah. Like, what else are they selling? So they're, they're the fifth largest brewery on the planet. Making and, one beer. And all they sell is one beer. <laughs> they got some levers on it. Sure, there's West Indies. There's well, London could, Porter. You could say the same thing yeah. about, like, Budweiser or Miller. It's like, they got Miller, Miller full. They got light and high life. It's the same. Like, don't. If they could have a Guinness light, it's the same. I agree. <laughs> yeah. But people drink a lot. Of, people drink a lot of Guinness. I had Guinness today. <laughs> people drink a lot of Guinness because you know what? When you get Guinness, you know it ain't gonna be fucked up. It ain't gonna be an experiment. It's gonna be what you know it to be, no matter where you get it. Yeah, I think that goes back to me. The last episode we were talking, we we're like, just on vacation or you're somewhere, like, just give me that Corona. I don't know. It does what um, it's what I want and you're like well just give me that Guinness I can't decide I know it's gonna be good it's gonna come you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be Guinness yeah you know um, Diageo has some crazy brands in their lineup too man uh, Captain Morgan's um, Ciroc um, yeah Johnny Walker mm-hmm. they have they have very recognizable brands yeah um, Malibu is it Bullet right oh yeah Bullet's Both in their in lineup yeah so they have a ton of recognizable brands so well, Guinness is the Guinness is the strongest. <laughs> Good for them, man. I like Guinness. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Damn. It's probably the most powerful. It's probably the most powerful of the macro brands. If I'm power ranking macro brands, I would put Guinness. I'd say Guinness in high life. But I, I don't. I'm not, what are you putting above Guinness? Is for if you're power ranking macro beers, what are you personally putting above? Well, Guinness? the fact that like I think if you're going to rank it like that, Guinness. Someone could have a Guinness poster, yeah. wear a Guinness shirt. Yeah. They're gonna rep Guinness. Yeah. The only other brand, like you could say, old style in Chicago. Yeah. But that's just here, really. Right. Maybe Milwaukee, but um, you could be in uh, Missouri, and someone could have a Guinness shirt on. Yeah. They're not gonna have an old style shirt on. Yeah. Uh, I don't, no one's really walking around with a Bud Light shirt. No. Right. <laughs> Maybe they bring back Spuds. <laughs> hey, you might, they might have a Spuds McKenzie shirt before they have a before they have a good life shirt. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you're right. Guinness is probably the top top dog. So I know right I got there. really I got really fucked up on a boat, and um, I had to go to like a high school um, like all classes reunion the next day. Okay. And you know all I had was like a handful of like spotted cows, and I was out of those. And I didn't want anything strong, but, you know, one of the guys was like, hey, man, I got a Bud Light. So I just poured it in my red cup and just kept it moving. Okay. And I was like, you know, if, it's, if you're if you're, if you're you're hungover, you can roll a Bud Light the next day. <laughs> <laughs> I found a use case. I found a use case for Bud Light. <laughs> I was like, this is perfect because it's 4.2 and I don't really need anything stronger because I'm, I'm a mess. Right. And that's know? why all those beers sell very well at, like, sporting events and things where you're just... You're outside in the heat most of the time, and you're like, let's go. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Thirsty. <laughs> cool. Anything else you need to mention before we get out of here? Um, Man, I think that's Oh, it, Oak man. Park Microbrew. Oh, uh, yeah. Shout out to Oak Park Microbrew. Tickets probably, are on sale. Probably like, uh, yeah, pretty solid fest. It's, Three uh, week, four weeks. Three, four weeks. Yeah, they don't change it a whole lot. I think uh, the location does a lot of heavy lifting. Yeah. But then also, um, it's the location closest to Chicago where you'll get to try all the suburb breweries that you heard about but didn't, you didn't bother going to. Right. So, good for them. And then we know those guys, man. Shout out to Jana and um, Heather. Yeah, I'm sure they're still helping. And yeah, I think they're kind of they're kind of like the team behind oh, shit. pushing it. Yeah. Okay. So, that, that's always a good hang. Yeah. Uh, I'd say consistently, too. You know, it's pretty consistent fast. So good for them, and cheers to them. Yeah, nice. Um, that's that's it. That's all I got. Okay. I don't know what did you you didn't go to the biker dude for the oh hop? for hot butcher I missed it. Oh, okay. I missed it. I wanted to go, and then I was just like I'm just no. gonna water these plants and uh, <laughs> sit on my couch and play this video game. <laughs> yeah. 
Strong priorities there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his only time in Chicago, too. But he's going to be back at, in uh, August. Oh, so your message I, would be I, like, I can't make it. Are you coming back? I think I'm going to go. I got plans. I think I'm going to go in August. He's okay. going to be back like August 12th. At, to Hot Butcher? At Hot Butcher. Oh, yeah. okay. So I think I'm going to go back to that, man, because I, I, I think he's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I need to try him. Yeah. Cool. All right. And that's going to do it uh, for the Cider Cast. Take care. <laughs> Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.